Okay guys, so this is just a quick one in response to this uh, Facebook um, post in the Bricks community. Uh, just wanting to know how to use images as backgrounds rather than CSS backgrounds, so image widgets. Um, so heading over here, I'm going to show you how I do this. So I've got a very basic uh, section with a container and heading. Uh, and my background color I've got is a dark gray and I've got that done for a very specific reason here. So I like to use um, very clear class naming, so I use BEM naming, um, so you can reuse this in many places. So what I'm going to do is start with a name, I'm going to call it a section uh, with a image background, a section image BG, okay, that'll do, um, and uh, hit the enter key on that so it's created by uh, class. Um, I'm going to do a couple of things on here. Uh, firstly, I need to set my position to relative, and I need to so that I can place the image inside it. I need to set the isolation mode. Now, there is no isolation mode in the UI, so I'm going to do this from the custom CSS. And how you do this is up to you. Um, I generally, if I'm going to change some of the CSS rules that are not in the UI, uh, and they're not going to be altered for on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, I generally do them in the custom CSS box rather than the UI. So I'm going to set the um, position to relative and the isolation mode. I'll come back to that. Yeah, it's isolate. Okay, so that's my first class. Now what I want to do is put an image in that section. So I'm going to grab an image any old image and I'm going to chuck it in the section. So I don't want it, yep, that's fine. It doesn't matter whether it's in the front or the back here. Um, I'm just going to chuck that in this section because I want this to cover the entire section. Uh, I'm going to give that a, a BIM name of element, so of image. So I've got my section, image background, two underscores means it's an element. And I'm going to put my the rest of my um, CSS on that. Once again, there's a couple of things we can't set in the UI, so I'm going to do them from the root here. Actually, we can do this from the UI. So I will do this from the UI to show you the difference. So in the UI, I'm going to go to the layout. I'm going to set the width to 100%, the height to 100%, the position to absolute, uh, and the top and left both to zero. Okay, I'm also going to set in here a minus Z index, so minus one. Now, typically that would make it disappear, but I'm going to show you why it doesn't do that. And for the image itself, I'm just going to uncheck that so we can select a individual image and maybe pick this background here. Okay, so there's my background. Um, Absolute style of uh, 100, not 100%, not the percent, 100%, 100 percent. Now what we have is a stretched image, which is not what we want. We want to actually have that fill properly. So we go to the content for that image and we tell it we want the object fit to be cover. And that treats it like a CSS background with cover. Okay, so by doing this, um, we now have a image element in the background acting like a CSS background set to cover, but we have all of these controls so we can pick our size, uh, we can put alt tags on them, we can uh, target the uh, image directly with these attributes. Um, we also get a source set, so I'm going to quickly show you that. I'm going to look at this here, and if we have a look at that background image. Uh, we now have our core image, but we get the source set, which is so at different screen width, it's going to download different resolution images, so or different sized images, which gives us a great uh, performance advantage. So with CSS, it will stick a background image in, and it's that size. So regardless of your screen size, even if it's a, it's a 2,000 wide image, and then you look at it on a small screen, it's going to download the 2000 wide image 
unless you manually change it in your settings. So by doing this, it automatically gives you your screen size, um, uh, sorry, your image size at the different green sizes. Uh, you also get your alt tag, titles, whatever you want to put on there, and anything else um, that you want to add to this as ARIA attributes, etc. Uh, you can add directly uh, just by using the attributes here. Now, coming back to, remember I said, so on this image here, all we've said is our layout size, 100%, height and width, absolute, and uh, left and top are zero and a Z index of minus one. Now, normally when you set Z index of minus one, that, because I've got a background color, that would disappear behind the background. So if we go back to the section up here where I've got my section, the image background, and you remember I've got some custom CS here, which is the isolation isolate. What happens if I comment that out? If I just comment that out, my image disappears. Okay, now the reason it disappears is because there's a implicit uh, Z index of zero on anything that doesn't have a Z index. So this background here has an implicit Z index of zero. So if I put minus one on the image, the image disappears behind the background because it's got a lower Z index. When you set a container's isolation mode to isolate, it creates a new Z index stacking order. So from the section, that is considered to be its own level. I guess you could call it in the stacking order for your Z index. So anything you put on elements uh, inside of that are relevant to that container. So if I go to that Z index on that image, for example, and I go back to that and I can make that negative 100 or 1000 it makes no difference because that negative 1000 is relevant to that section container not the entire document so does that make sense um, it's a very simple way of controlling it you then don't have to go to each element or have a inner container and tell it to put a z index of one or two put it above it uh, you just always use minus one that puts it behind everything in that container as long as the parent container of that has the isolation set to isolate. So that's this video today, and I hope that makes sense and is useful for you. Um, I like using this method, and um, I, I think it's a good way to go for both SEO and accessibility. Um, but uh, let me know in the comments. So uh, if you like this sort of thing, hit the subscribe and hit the like. Thank you.